secreted the wounded with grief and shame weighed down now scornfully surrounded with thorns thine only crown how pale thou art with anguish with sore abuse and scorn how does thy visage languish which once was bright as morn. Well, hello there. Hello. hello. Welcome. I'm glad you've come in and you've taken a seat for this production tonight. If you're all here for the wake, I'm sorry, but you're a little bit too late. But guess what? There is good news. But I'll get to that a bit later on. But you've, you've all come at a good time because everybody is here. So make yourself at home this evening and guess what? I'll introduce everyone to you. Oh dear, what am I thinking? I haven't introduced myself. So I am Mary, Jesus' mother. Why aren't I crying, you may be asking? Well, as a parent, you never expect to bury your own child. And I admit, it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. But as I said, I have news for you, good news for you. But first, let me tell you my story. From the start, I knew he was going to be born, not gifted to me, for a much higher purpose. It's not every day you have an angel come to you and tell you, a virgin, albeit an engaged one, that you are going to have a baby. <coughs> I had found favor with God. I had no idea how or why, but Joseph and I we're going to be in for a dramatic parenting journey. Joseph, of course, wanted to spare my shame, bless him. But the angel soon put him right. Plus, I reminded him that the angel had told me that Jesus would grow up to be great, imminent, son of the Most High. I didn't really know what that meant, to be honest. But when a host of angels then declared the birth of my baby to the shepherds, and then noble wise men came to visit me after I gave birth, I realized that Jesus was destined for an <coughs> extraordinary life. But guess what? Nothing could have prepared me for what was ahead of me. You know, standing here now, I admit, there's still parts that I cannot fully understand and comprehend. Back then, I looked at Jesus lying in a manger, and I was wondering why, how, and what would become of him. I watched him grow from a confident boy, teaching his elders in the temple, into a confident yet humble man, performing miracles and bringing hope to all of us. But nothing, but nothing prepares a mother to see her son crucified. I watched him in agony. My baby, whom the angels had declared, the Messiah. Now he wore a crown of thorns on his head, and he carried the very cross he was to die on. My heart still breaks for him as they drove the nails through his hands. I watched him die on the cross. My precious, 
perfect baby, wounded. His body, much <coughs> like my heart, in that moment, it was broken. What am I, Lord, has confusing there are a lot of Marys in this story but our stories couldn't be more different where she had found favor with God from an early age let's just say I took a slightly different path you know <laughs> people might tell you that I was I acted like I was one of the disciples but you see I had so much to thank Jesus for he had done so much for me he set me free. He literally saved me from myself. There's a part of my life I almost can't stand to remember. Back then, I wasn't the kind of woman you'd want to be seen walking around with, although everybody knew who I was. The whole loneliness of it all, the shame, it was suffocating. But then one day, I met someone called Jesus of Nazareth. I wasn't looking for him, but I've not been the same since that day. He changed me and drove away my tormentors. I was finally free in every sense of the word. I'd never known compassion like that before. He had a reputation for healing sick and broken people and he certainly healed this broken soul. That night in Bethany, when they all gathered to eat, I found a way to say thank you. The room grew still as she made her way to Jesus, she stumbled through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain, some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for her kind. Still on she came Through the shame that flushed her face Till at last 
she knelt before his feet and though she spoke no words everything she said was heard as she poured a love for the master from her box of alabaster she eyes come to praise on him like oil from my alabaster box don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair you weren't there the way life used to be she was a prisoner to the sin that had her bound and I spent my days poured my life without measure into a little treasure box she thought she'd found until the day when Jesus came to me and healed my soul with the wonder of his touch. So now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of. I've been forgiven and that's why I love him so much I'd love to pour my praise on him Like oil from Mary's alabaster box Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and dry them with my hair, my hair. You were there the night Jesus found me. You did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me. And you don't know the cost of the no, you don't know the cost of my praise. You don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster Oh, you're still here. Good. So glad you can join us. You've met the Marys, I see. I'm one of the 12 disciples. You can call me Bart. We're all here, so I'll introduce you later. So, I'm guessing you're here because you heard he died. But you have heard the news though, right? No? Okay. Well, you're really going to want to hear the latest, but once I tell you, you might not be interested in all the other details. So let me tell you a bit about the days leading up to it. Let me tell you about the Passover. It was a different kind of Passover that night. We could all feel it in the air. 
Or maybe it's because there was something different about Jesus. Jesus got up from the table and grabbed a basin of water and a towel. And I remember thinking to myself, what is he doing with the foot water? He knelt down and started to wash my feet. I remember all of us just looking at each other. We just sat there. Nobody moved. He moved to each one of us. And I remember thinking, this, is just, this just doesn't feel right. After all, he was our teacher, our Lord and our King. But what we didn't realize was that even in that moment, he was trying to teach us how each of us should serve. Then he took some bread and some wine, blessed it and served it, and said, take, eat. This is my body that is given for you, and this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, when it came to the lessons Jesus was trying to teach us all these years, I admit, we weren't always the sharpest tools in the box. In remembrance of me, why were we, why were we going to need to remember him? And what did he mean by blood shed for us? I just, I just didn't get it. None of us did until we looked up at Jesus on that cross. His body broken and bleeding. Is this what he meant? Had he done this for us? Well, it sounds like the mourners are ready for another song. Why don't you join in on this one? We have everyone join in with this one, please. The blood that Jesus. The blood that Jesus shed for me. When back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from death.
thank you for coming. So I guess you've met the others. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I have, I'm a little bit embarrassed because I haven't really lived up to my name. My name is Peter. The Rock. I guess by now you know that Jesus has died. So I want you to listen up. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what happened to me. Jesus, on his way to Gethsemane, I accompanied him with the sons of Zebedee. We went, and as we were there in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Wait here while I go a little bit further to pray. So we saw him go down to pray a little further. And we sat down. And before you knew it, our eyes were sleepy. I guess it was due to the food that we were eating. It was quite good food. And you know when you eat, you got to sleep. So we fell asleep. And, you know, I don't know how long we were sleeping for. Next thing I knew, Jesus came and he said, can't you just watch and pray with me for one hour? One hour. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. That's what he said to me. I felt so sad, so embarrassed. And he says, I'm going to go and pray again. Pray. We tried to keep our eyes open. We really did. We tried. But we fell asleep again. We fell asleep. I don't know how long we fell asleep for. Next thing I knew, we heard footsteps and rumblings. And I woke up with the others. And all I could see was Judas. And you know me. I'm a fiery guy. I'm fiery. I saw him and I was just filled with anger. I said, Judas, you? And I just whipped out my sword. And I came towards him and I saw these, these guys, these priests and these guards. And I just whipped out my sword. Whoosh. The ears of this guy was gone. He, he was gone. Jesus said to me, put away your sword. Put it back in your sheath. And he picked up the ear of this man and put it back onto the side of his face as if nothing happened. As if nothing happened. And I said to myself, I wanted to swing for Judas. I should have swung for him because he was the one that betrayed Jesus that night. Plus he wasn't anywhere near with us he wasn't there. I know that there are times where Jesus said that we will stumble from time to time. And he's right. We would stumble from time to time. And he says, Peter, he looked at me. Peter, you will deny me three times. I said, me? Lord, you're crazy. No. You're talking foolishness, rubbish. Me? Deny you? Didn't you just see what I did with the sword? I will die for you. I will fight for you. I will die for you. No chance. Not me. Jesus looked at me lovingly. All the love in the world. You will deny me three times. They took him away. They took him away. I followed, but not too close, but I followed close enough just in case he gave the word, you know, and me and the fellas could just jump out and, you know, defend him if he needs be. But he never did. Nothing happened. They took him down to Sanhedrin. A lot of people were there gathered. And I was there, you know, looking to see what was happening. Someone came to me and says, 
are you not one of those disciples that were with Jesus? I said, no, 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 no. That's not me. No, 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 no. That's not me. I don't know this guy. I just continued to move along, just move somewhere else, watching from a distance. And someone else came. I'm sure you, you are one of his followers. I'm sure it is you. I said, no, 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 me? No, I don't know this guy. Not me. I walked along a little further and said, why are these people bothering me? Why are they bothering me? Leave me alone, please, leave me alone. I went to the fire to warm myself up. And I could see as the fire gives light, it also gives heat. People could see who I am. One more person came. Surely you, you were with him. You are one of his disciples. Surely. I said, leave me alone. I don't know this man. I don't know him. I don't know him. Leave me alone, please. Next thing I know, the cock crowed. Just as Jesus said, you will deny me three times. And the cock will crow. The thing that I really wanted to do, I could not do. I wanted to fight for my Jesus, but I couldn't. For whatever reason, I couldn't.
saw you with Peter there. He's still pretty caught up about denying Jesus like that. Even though, well, especially now we know. You have heard, haven't you? Of course, you must have. Did my son James tell you about what happened when we ladies went up to the tomb? Of course he did. But let me tell you about the days leading up to that. It feels like only yesterday they were waving palm trees, shouting Hosanna as Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And next, next we're watching Jesus condemned to die. When I close my eyes, I see that crown of thorns. I remember how they spat and jeered him. I remember how they beat him and how he bled. I remember how he stood there, innocent yet helpless, as Governor Pilate asked the crowd to choose between Barabbas and Jesus. I remember my utter disbelief when they chose to free Barabbas. I don't ever think I'll make sense of that moment. My heart just broke for him. I still hope for a miracle. After all, this was Jesus. I'd watch blind men approach him and walk over his sight. I'd watch lame men carry to him, then run to tell their friends how he had healed them. He fed the thousands, calmed the storm, walked on water, and raised the dead. That was the Jesus I knew. But now, now I watched him as he stumbled under the weight of the cross he carried through the streets to Golgotha. He looked like he was carrying more than just the weight of that cross that day. He seemed to have the weight of the world on his shoulders. In fact, in that moment, I think he actually did. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem the day the soldiers tried to clear the narrow street and the crowd pressed in to see the man condemned to die on Calvary. He was pleased from a beating there were stripes upon his back and he wore a crown of thorns upon his head and he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for his death down the Via Dolorosa, called the way of suffering. Like a lamb came the Messiah, Christ the King. But he chose to walk that road out of his love for you and me. Down the Via Dolorosa, all the way to Calvary. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem that day, the soldiers tried to clear the narrow street. But the crowds burst in to see the man condemned to die on Calvary. Down the Via Dolorosa, for the way of suffering, like a lamb came the Messiah, Christ the King. But he chose to walk that road out of it love for you and me down the via dolorosa all the way to calvary the blood that was shed for the souls of all men 
made its way to the heart of Jerusalem. Down the Via Dolorosa, all the way of suffering, like a lamb came the Messiah, Christ the King. But he chose to walk that road out of his love for you. And me down the Via Dolorosa, all the way to Calvary. How are you feeling? I see people have been filling you in on the crucifixion story. But you have heard, haven't you? Anyway, I know what you're thinking. What's a Roman soldier like me doing here? I admit this isn't my usual crowd. But I've seen a lot of out the ordinary recently. I don't usually have a problem with my job. I've been doing it for years. I follow orders without question. Never had a problem with that. Well, until recently anyway. I used to get a kick out of administrating justice to murderers and thieves. As, um, well, I used to nail them to the cross. But that day, anyway, there was just something about Jesus. I knew that man, he didn't deserve it. Um, don't know quite what got into some of the guys. Some of them even cut themselves, fashioning a crown of thorns on his head. We seem to get egged on by the crowd quite a lot. They really seem to, um, to hate him. The job of nailing Jesus to the cross, it, it really fell to me. I've been doing this for years. And so, I know, nailing the first hand is, is always the hardest. A couple of the guys are usually needed to nail the prisoner down. They fight to get away. They swear at me. They cuss, they curse. He just, he just looked at me. He looked at me. <clears throat> Once you raised him up on the cross, I heard him say, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. <clears throat> he forgave me. No one's ever done that before. There were two thieves crucified by Jesus that day. They seemed to know who he was. I heard one of them telling him to save himself and them. He was mocking him, of course. But the other guy, he seemed a lot more sincere. Hmm. He turned to him and said, Lord, remember me when you come into my kingdom. Did Jesus say something about him being in paradise? I've never seen anyone so, so dignified in, in death. I was close enough to hear those very last words. I'll always remember them. He said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And then, hmm, it was finished. Surely, surely, surely this man was the Son of God.
A thief lay dying on the cross And he knew all along That he had done wrong And now for his sins He must die But as he turned he saw the Christ With his blood flowing down He knew he had found The one who could save his soul So he cried, remember me when you come into your kingdom, O oh Lord, remember me when you talk to your father. Tell him that I know I have been what he wants me to be, but in mercy now I plead, Lord, please. Remember me. Jesus said, Have no fear, so you shall be with me eternally. It is for you that I die. Now I know Christ lives again, and he stands all alone beside the white throne with his own righteous life. He covers mine. So I cry, remember me when you come into your kingdom, O oh Lord. Remember me when you talk to your Father. Tell him that I know I've not been all he wants me to be. But in mercy now I plead, Lord, please remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom, O oh Lord. Remember me when you talk to your father tell him that I know I've not been all he wants me to be but in mercy now I plead Lord please remember me remember Sorry, can't really stop the chat. I'm trying to make sure I get this all down on parchment before I forget. But how can I? How can any of us forget? How the gods divided his clothing? How they put a crown of thorns on his head and wrote a sign on the cross saying, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. What is it he said near the end? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yes, I admit, at that moment, just for a moment, as darkness fell on that hill, and earth itself shook. I wondered that myself. And then, it is finished. But clearly, he didn't mean it is finished in the way we understood it as. Well, 
You have heard, haven't you? I mean, all along, I think we've been thinking small scale. We've been thinking he was going to free us from Roman rule. But those was part of a much bigger plan for all of us. He's been trying to get us to think bigger all along. Bigger? Higher? Literally. He wasn't talking about reigning down here. He was talking about being above all that. Above all powers. Above all kings. In fact, that sounds good. I'll write it down while you join in with another song. was crucified it was all over I mean were we wrong about him we must have been Jesus was dead so we hid we hid in fear then on Sunday morning a small group of us women went to prepare his body with spices and ointments it was the very least we could do even if none of this made any sense for three days, the longest three days of my life, we were afraid. Oh, but then, that Sunday, my head raced faster than my feet and we bolted to the tomb. The rest of the disciples wouldn't believe what we had said, seen when we tried to explain. A massive sealed tombstone moved. The Roman guards silenced, blinding angels rushing to the earth so fast they shook the ground. Unnecessary grave clothes now, neatly folded, lay silent in the tomb as if they had a secret to tell. If a picture is worth a thousand words, then an empty tomb is worth a thousand promises. Because do you see what this means? He's not dead. He's not missing. He's not been taken away. He's alive. 
Could they crucify him and kill his ministry? Could they keep him in the grave? Could they keep us from telling everyone what has happened to our Lord? They most certainly could not. at him and saw a simple man, a carpenter with healing in his hands. They saw him come a sea and heal a dying man. They saw the Father's plan, but could they really understand?
Great, you're still here. Seems you've met almost everyone here tonight. I'm guessing one of them must have told you. No? Are you serious? Well, if you haven't worked it out already, Jesus died, yes. But the good news, the best news, is that his story didn't end there. We are all here today, not because he died, but because he lives. Amen. Our Redeemer lives. Amen. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? Who told the ocean you could only come this far? And who showed the moon where to hide till evening? Whose words alone can catch a falling star?
So there you have it. There you have it. But don't go thinking the story ends there. We watched as Jesus ascended into heaven, but he's left us with the good news to tell to everyone we meet. The news that he's going to prepare for us all and he'll return to take us to live for eternity with him in heaven. Don't you see? He truly is the king of kings and his act of sacrifice has made us all heirs to the kingdom. All we need to do is give our hearts to him. Right. I'm sure you can't sit here all day. Although we do hope you come back soon and visit. But stand and join us with one more song. Let's, let's continue to raise the roof. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hands of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm so grateful for all the gifts that God has given to us. And I want to thank everyone for participating, the musicians, the AV team, so we could hear everything. All those who shared with the spoken word. All the singers. And none of this would have happened without the organizers. The whole team that put it together, headed up by Sherilyn. Tonight we have reignited a spark of what used to be. Long before I came to Hansworth, I heard about Hansworth. In the old days when I lived in Manchester, I'd travel all the way up because Hansworth, things were happening. And this evening we got a little taste of what, what can be again. So we thank God. But none of this would have been possible if Jesus was not alive. We would just be at a social club going through motions and following traditions. But Jesus is alive. Amen. Let me share with you a short and powerful scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning from verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Praise, Praise the Lord. As the drama unfolded, I saw myself, and I'm sure you did, in different characters. Like the Peter, when you really let yourself down. Thinking, why did I do that? How, was that really me? And then God forgave you. Or like the woman who, who bathed his feet and poured the oil over him and dried them with her head. The moments when we were so grateful to God. We said, God, I am so grateful. I will, never, I will never leave you again until next time. But then God is so wonderful. The times when we felt so brave and, and so faithful to God because we're in a crowd of believers. And then when we are on our own. That's when we realize how weak we are. When we think we can fight for God and we feel so strong, and yet in a smaller test, we fail, then we realize without him, we can do nothing. But the good news is, with God, all things are possible. So thank everyone for their participation and for dramatizing and for enabling us not just to remember, but to relive. And I pray that that experience may remain alive in us and with us. And encourage us to go and tell other people, come, come and hear, come and see, come and catch the spark so you can be part of the fire too. God bless you all. Thank you.
much more than that. Jesus 
I would invite us to stand as we have the closing prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for coming all the way to this earth, even if just one of us needed to be saved. You would have done it just for me. Thank you, dear Lord, that you, you showed us how we can work together to share the gospel, how every age group can combine in a multi-generational production, which is what the church is, where everyone can participate sharing the gospel so that whoever is listening, whatever age group they are, they can say, that's for me too. Thank you for all that you have done. And thank you, dear Lord, that this isn't just a one-off, but the beginning of the future. Amen. Keep us safe now as we travel home to our various abodes and bring us back again to this place where we can continue the journey of sharing the gospel and learning about the gospel and living the gospel and being the gospel. And when you come, and we know it is soon, all we ask, Lord, is that you will be able to say to each one of us, well done, good and faithful servant. Come in to the joy of your Father's house. Amen. Thank you for coming to this Upward Way production. Good night.